here we are at this incredible chess club here. Let's see what we have going on here tonight on a Hello. lovely Tuesday. Oh, hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, well, so I heard that there's a big lecture tonight. Yeah, the beginner breakdown is right next door. Groundhog Day Spectacular. Oh my gosh. Free popcorn. Are you telling free me popcorn. free popcorn and soda? And groundhogs? Groundhogs, popcorn, soda. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. Missouri I got a state champion. Missouri state champion. 1998. Unbelievable. What an opportunity. When does this thing start? Now. It starts now. Oh, we got to get over there. All right. We are back. All right. Gotta get over here to the Kingside Diner. I hear that the one and only Mike Comer is going to be lecturing tonight. Oh, 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 the Kingside Diner signs out. Right. Maybe we need to get that looked at. Okay. So uh, here we are at the Kingside Diner. And uh, hopefully the door's not locked. Oh, it's open. Yes. Hey, is this is this the site of beginner breakdown? <laughs> oh, I, I can't wait. That's All right, welcome to a very special edition to begin a breakdown, and this time I mean it. All right, this is a secret of true happiness revealed. Obviously, um, I've gave you the meaning of life, and if you haven't know it, it's essentially getting glory. But check out meaning of life revealed, and uh, then proceed to this uh, episode. So, there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways to be happy. It's not as important as getting glory, but, but just because you get all the glory doesn't necessarily mean you're happy. So, so as we go through the games and go through all this, we'll see how to be happy and what it takes to be happy and how glorious it is to be happy. All right, so, so I was trying to get uh, some glory uh, last weekend along with uh, Keith Bass who finished three and a half out of five and won his section. The only game he lost, of course, was the who? Who'd you lose to, Keith? I lost to you, Mike. Yeah, he lost to Mike Comer. All right. And that's the game uh, The game will show, OK? We can't resist it, all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, I had the white pieces against Keith. We were both 1-0. Oh. All right, I start out with the king's pawn. And black plays e5. So my bishop attacks the pivotal f7 square. And so now Keith doesn't want anything to happen. He doesn't want the knight coming in like this and taken. So he's going to just plant his knight, not with h6. So do you know what the computer actually recommends is the best move in this position? It's a shocker. No. Danny, do you know? No, no. Just queen e2. Queen e2? You're getting close. You're warm. You got the right piece. But we might as well threaten checkmate. Because uh, cause if he tries something like g6, he's not going to be too happy, right? <laughs> because queen takes e5, check. If he attacks my queen like this, Checkmate, right? <laughs> and uh, so the only way to stop it is either with queen to e7 or queen to f6. So he doesn't want to do either. Oh, I don't want to do either. So knight f3 and just proceed normally. d6. Now I play h3 because I am unfamiliar at this point point with Legal's mate or Legal's mate or whatever. So if I play knight to c3 here and he plays the move bishop to g4, do you know what shocking move I have in this position? Knight takes pawn. And you're like, what? I, well, I could take your knight and then I would take your bishop. But if he's like, oh man, look at this, free queen, we have a trick. Bishop takes f7 check. The king can only go one spot, right? 
And then where is the checkmate? Knight to d5. Knight to d5. Yep. Checkmate. Look at that. Can you believe it? So, so you know, I, I usually say h3 is cool, h6, you know, but, you know, maybe developing normal is, is good. So anyway, h3, play, play a little passive, play a little passive, and now he's playing a little passive, so I get castled. Now an interesting move that uh, Keith might have had in this position is just, I'm just going to go for it. g5, g4, and, and try to break up my castle, because he's not committed to castling over there. He can still castle queenside if need be, so he might want to just start attacking me after I'm castled. But he played a move I expected him to play knight to f6. Yes? Oh, never mind. Okay, all right, good, all right. All right, Rick, e1, uh, and uh, he gets castled. And uh, c3, preparing d4. So I go ahead with my plan. And now my knight takes a little stroll. And I play a4 to prevent b5, because if he plays b5, he can take. If he takes back, I can take with the bishop, and this pawn is in a pin. I mean, if he takes there, oh, I get your rook. OK. So after a4, brings his queen out. And now I bring him a knight back. Knight attacks my bishop, so I should probably retreat it. And so, so Jonathan Trantz, the guy from uh, Chess Openings Explained, says you should always bring your bishop back as far as possible so that your opponent will forget about it. As we'll see in a subsequent game, it really bails me out. And it bails me out in this game as well, because look, now my pawn is only defended by the queen and no longer the rook. All right, so bishop out. I attack his knight. His knight's got to go back to c8. Kind of an awkward square for his knight. And now I play bishop to d2, preparing to play queen to c1, and uh, attacking h6. So now he makes a blunder. But I make a subsequent blunder. All right, so he's trying to break open the center. God bless you, Mario. But what do we have here? So, so what we should do in these positions is actually calculate and not just move. Because that's what I did. That's like, oh, that's a bad move. I can just boop, and then I end up with egg on my face. OK, so if you go through each different capture and really picture it in your mind, you'll easily see the right one. OK, so we see if, if knight takes here, maybe he'll play knight takes. And then, you know, we might have dreams of sacking our rook. And uh, I don't know. We're and hitting, hitting. Uh, you know, maybe hitting this. But you know, it's kind of, kind of shaky. Okay. And we see. Well, if we take this, he would take back maybe, and then we can take. All right. And that way we're up a pawn, or we can take here. This is what I did instantly, instead of going through each and every step. So what move does he make that just like kind of humiliates me and gives him an edge here? Yes? Pawn takes pawn and uh, equal? No. If pawn takes pawn, um, I'm going to take his knight. He can take my knight. I'll take his bishop. Now, uh, he could probably take my pawn. Well, no, you better save your rook. And then I would just, like, move up. Or no, I would take his pawn. And the computer's going to be like white wins by 500, OK? By 5, I've, well, might as well be. I'm up by 11. <laughs> OK, so uh, what's, the, what's the code? And uh, so, uh, but he's got a much better move than pawn takes pawn. How else can he take the pawn? 
Night, right. Don't feel bad. I didn't see it either. I thought the other person's turn when I said that. Oh, oh, excellent, excellent, okay. All right, so, so Knight takes pawn. And now, um, you know, I might still have a little lead, but it's nowhere near as big as it once was. OK. All right, but we can't let stuff like that get us down. We have to move forward, all right? All right, so, so bishop, you know, gets on the same line as the queen. So bishop blocks aid the pawns. Knight attacks the knight. Now. Now, if you were listening to what I was saying before, I was saying, oh, I really want my queen and bishop on the same line like this. So, so it really doesn't make sense for me to play knight to g3 in this position, because then he takes, and my bishop is here now. It would make way more sense for me to play here, because if he would take, now I get what I was after the whole time. But little did I know. All right. But he doesn't take. Instead, he, maybe he got his move order wrong. Because taking here, and bishop takes, and queen takes, will be OK. Because I can't take bishop takes pawn, discovered attack on the queen, because queen can take the bishop. But unfortunately, when he plays uh, Queen takes a5 right now. What move can I play to essentially win the game? All right. Knight takes knight on e4, so when the pawn takes back, you can take the bishop, the other bishop, and hang queen. Fantastic. Right. And then he would move his queen. I would take his knight, and then I would be all right. I would be all right. Yeah, thanks, Mario. And then I would take take it all, and and I'd be doing good. Okay, so that's how the game ended. Keith Keith knew that I'm such a such a great player. He couldn't stand uh, playing any any longer against me. Right? <laughs> Save his energy for the next games. All right. So good game, Keith. Uh, hopefully, you learned something from that game. Uh, yeah, all right, good, good, good. And now, uh, now here I am playing, playing the guy that introduced me to uh, tournament chess, Pete Emmer, in sophomore year of high school. OK, so, so this is the money game. If I win, I get second place in the tournament, unlike Danny Maguka. <laughs> but that's OK. So. So I have the white pieces, and I'm feeling pretty good. All right, so I start out queen's pawn. Unfortunately, through most of my uh, career, I was an e-pawn player. So I don't know any of the traps in queen's pawn's openings. So if anybody says my comer is really bad at chess, eh, I mean, for the first part of the game, you're going to be thinking, you're validated, <laughs> but, but we'll see. All right, so now he tricks me, all right? That looks like a really dubious move. Knight blocks the queen, right? If you've seen this at home, this, this opening, you're like, oh no, I can't believe it. All right, so I'm like, dude, Pete, I, I hate to do it to you. I really hate to do it to you. And so I take. And unfortunately, or fortunately, he's got more class than me. If I was playing the black side and I knew this trick, I would probably slam this move like really hard and, and be like, yeah. All right, what does black play? And keep in mind, it's, it's along the same line as that legal's mate, or legal's mate, or however you pronounce it. This is called, for, for the record, it's called the elephant. All right. All right, so, so we saw this tactic before. So it is Groundhog Day, OK, as we saw before, OK? So, so a big part of being happy and not being unhappy, like I could go home and cry about this game and blah, 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 or I could learn from my mistakes 
pass on my knowledge and, and maybe instrument this in the future against my future opponents. But who thinks I'm actually going to fall for this tactic ever again? The answer is no. Okay? So, so we, we've seen this now. We've seen it, we can recognize it, and now we can instrument it. What move does black play to win the game here? All right, Ben Simon. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. He did it instantly. And so now I'm like, oh man. Obviously, I knew I fell for a trap, but I have to look at the alternatives. If I don't take the queen, it's just going to be miserable. So I just have to accept my punishment and move on with my life. Bishop checks, queen up, the only legal move. Maybe that's why you thought it was legal's position, because I only have one legal move. All right, so king takes, and then he takes, and now I'm down a full piece for a pawn, OK? So once again, you can't ever give up here. You just got to keep fighting, all right? So what's a move that, that just says, all right, I'm down, but I'm not out. I'm going to keep, keep the fight on. Anybody? What, what, what looks like a, a very natural move here? E4, keep the fight on, OK? Once you lose your fight, you lose it all. All right? What's another fighting move here? Bishop C4. Bishop C4, Bishop C4 unfortunately, um, you know, even if you waste the move and we take, and then this is going to be not so fun. All right, so F4. All right, just keep at it. Keep at it. Even though you're down, doesn't matter. You got you to be scrappy. All right, so normal development. So he attacks my center with f5. So now I got a passed pawn, OK? Just like that. I'm down a whole piece. But you know, you just keep it up, and you know, good things can happen. You don't just play passively just waiting for your, your time to expire, you know? All right, so h6, g3, protect the f-pawn. Bishop out. This is a good plan for him. If he can start putting his bishop here, he's going he's gonna to do good things. C6, I don't know. He's got, he, I mean, he doesn't need to protect this square. He's got it, right? He's got it. But all right. So rook over. King to C7, kind of weird, putting your king on the same uh, file as my rook. All right, so bishop challenges bishop. So now he does it. So I protect it. In an endgame without a queen, you know, your king can become a warrior, as we'll see. It's a very important concept. This king has to make up for me being down a piece. You have to make him an active, active piece. So rook up. So, so, luckily, so luckily, I started thinking, actually, instead of just playing moves that you know, I thought would help me. So, so this is a big, big threat here, all right? If we're not careful, we could lose more material. And I'm only, I've got a, a pawn for that bishop, so I don't want to lose any of my, any, all my guys are precious right now. So what is the threat on the board? So first we have to, one, identify the threat, and secondly, do something about it. My king is currently overloaded, OK? <laughs> He's doing way, way too much. He's protecting the knight, protecting the pawn. So so what, what is black's tactic here? Yes. Yep, so it's going to take my knight, my king's going to take, and then rook takes pawn. Unbeknownst to me, I end up playing the best move. All right. so. I play rook, protects the knight. In hindsight, I was like, oh, I should have just protected the pawn. But all right, I got lucky. All right. So rook up. A much better plan for him is uh, to double the rooks on the D file, the action file, right? Not really much going on on here, except that I have a pawn that's currently not going anywhere. So not much action on the E file, the D file. Definitely the action file. It's the half-open file. 
All right, so knight up, attacks the pawn. King retreats, bishop attacks the pawn, g6. Now, now there's two things I could do in this position, right? Who, all right, if you had to, if you had to uh, predict the outcome of the game, uh, white wins, black wins, or draw, if you just had to look at this position, what would you think? Hello, sir, you can go ahead and take some free popcorn and enjoy the show. All right, so white is getting devastated here. And if you don't do something a lot about it, you're going to die a slow, monotonous death. You do not want to do that. We want to be happy, remember? All right, this is a secret of being happy. Go for it, all right? Very profound wisdom, OK? <laughs> so if you were going to go for it in this position, what would you do? Did you play knight takes the pawn? Yeah, knight takes the pawn, knight takes, bishop takes. Even though it's probably an unsound sacrifice, the alternative was even worse, okay? There's no joy in getting, uh, you know, st string tied for the rest of your life, right? So you go for it, okay? So now I have one, two pass pawns and a potential to make a third one, okay? And plus I got, I, got it, I got it going on now. I got some momentum all of a sudden. And look, on this very next move, guess who's retreating now, you know? So gotta go for it. And you'll be like, well, you just retreated. Well, that was a strategic retreat. As a Jonathan, hopefully, uh, he really helped me out here. You wanna put that bishop as far back as possible because when you're playing a real life board, on a real, a real board, not just this computer stuff. I mean, it's very hard to see this bishop behind all these pawns, you know? So, and if you're really good, you trim off the top of them so they don't even know, okay? So, so that's a good move. All right, bishop attacks my rook. I attack his bishop. He checks me. King attacks the bishop. And uh, bishop here. So he's kind, of, he's kind of begging that his bishop gets captured or trapped. So my king moves up, preparing g4. Obviously, he should play h5. But he's going to play rook first. So I'm like, OK. I can't, I can't resist playing g4, OK? If he's going to let me, I just got to try it. If I was really good, I would calculate, but it's too hard to calculate that. All right, so rook attacks my pawn. The simplest way to protect the pawn is with another pawn. Just push it. All right, so now I got two guys coming, coming right for him. And rooks are very bad at uh, defending uh, past pawns. If, if I was him, actually, in this position, I don't know what I would do. So I don't, I don't even have to calculate it. All right, so h5, obviously, is the best move. All right, so h5. So if I trade this pawn, for that pawn, uh, it's not going to be very good, you know, however he takes back. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be. It's going to be very, very bad. So, so, okay, so I cannot take this pawn or else I would just lose. So, what move do you think I have here to keep the game afloat for another minute? Any ideas? Because pawn takes check is coming, and that obviously is going to make it so I only have one defender of my F pawn. Sanad knows. Uh, G5 does not, well, G5, G5 unfortunately loses to uh, bishop takes pawn. So what's the easiest way to protect the pawn? With another pawn, right? F6, all right? So, so bishop takes check. So where's the only place my king can go to keep him active? E4. Okay, so check, king back, 
And as you know, if you're up material, just trade material to consolidate it down to a winning end game. So the, he's got first step down, rook takes rook, rook takes. Well, well now he's got to deal with pawn takes f6. Well, actually, if bishop takes, pawn takes f6 would not be uh, an option because it's, it's pinned, right. So he really should consider that. But say it gives me another check, king up. And now he kind of uh, freaks out, unfortunately. Knight takes check, pawn takes, rook takes. But, but as you see, he's, uh, he's got a knight. He's up a full knight. So he should win. So, but we just got to keep at it, all right? King up attacks the rook. So now when he plays rook take or rook to f5 check, what's a great move that uh, white has here? Bishop. Bishop, you're right, yeah. So he didn't see it. So Jonathan's plan that he told me came to light. And it's actually a double blunder. I love double blunders, okay? So bishop takes. So regardless of how he takes back, what move do I have now to win the game? Just flat out win the game. It's not even like rook takes bishop. Rook takes bishop. Pawn takes. King takes. And then I, 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 yeah, I'm unstoppable. Or even if he does come and stop me, I'm going to go get his pawns while he's over there with the H pawns. All right, so... Uh, and then if he takes back with the bishop, what move do I have? I have a fork in this position. Yeah, king f6. Um, I didn't even realize this, but I think this works too. But, but at king f6, yeah, that's what I would have done instantly. And now you can't save them both. All right, so... Uh, And now he puts his knight here, and I proceed to trap it. This is the only place he can hop to, so h3. And uh, he can't hop anywhere. OK? So that's how I became second place finisher in uh, the chess like it ought to be tournament. All right, but no fear. There are some uh, other great games from uh, ch chess like it ought to be here. So our good friend uh, Robert Beekman had the white pieces. So a, a big part about being happy for the rest of your life, OK, is uh, the biggest thing is never stop competing, OK? You've got to play on to the bitter end, all right? Because once you stop competing, what happens? It's over, OK? So there's no more glory. The glory's right up. So Robert Beekman, he's going to go for that glory until the day he can no longer do it. So good for him. So let's see how Robert Beekman tries to go for the glory. Knight f3, c5, g3. All right, he's got the standard dragon position. I like it. e5. So d3 prevents e4. So knight up. Bishop up, bishop e6, knight there, h6, so your bishop's attacked, you better take it, because if you go backwards, g5 is coming, if you go backwards, d4 is coming, right? So, just got to take it, queen takes, c4, bishop up, rook to b1, all right, black gets castled, a3, takes, knight takes, b5, knight up. Rook there. And you're not going to believe a move that's coming up pretty soon here. Hopefully it's not this move, but it might be. All right, queen to b3, attacks the b5 pawn. <laughs> like it, hate it. All right, pretty good move. If your opponent's asleep, like Mario, you might actually get away with this. 
Bishop takes queen, okay? Knight attacks the bishop. Darn, he saw it. All right. <laughs> Rook up. Knight up. Threatening the big fork. Will he see it? Will he see it? Oh. <laughs> so, unfortunately, he did not quite get out of the knight fork, huh? So, uh, what does black play to win the game? This is the game, and that's, that's the end of the game, okay? So, we, so we've had enough, all right? So you had a bad day, all right? Or bad round, bad hour. Guess what? There's always chance for a redemption, all right? And here comes Robert Beekman with his big redemption, okay? So just because, you know, you had a bad time, you know, I lost a knight in the beginning of the game, he lost his queen, you could just keep going, okay? Just keep on fighting. All right, so here it is. Robert Beekman has the white pieces against an 1100. So he's paired up by about 300 points here. So let's see how he proceeds. All right, knight f3. We've seen this before. <laughs> All right. He's like, I didn't lose because of my opening, so I'm going to keep that the same. <laughs> I just hopefully, I just won't hang my queen this time, right? Learning from our mistakes. All right, well, he brought his queen out though. <laughs> okay. You can't be afraid, you can't be afraid. He just knows now not to put it where it can be directly captured. So it doesn't mean you can't get out there and get your queen out there, it just means be smart about it. Learn from your mistakes. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes, rook protects the pawn. All right, queen to b3. He's not afraid to go to b3 right now because the bishop is here, not on e6. Queen attacks the knight. Does he see it? Yes. All right, he's attacked again. He sees it. All right, rook. Rook takes the d-file. Knight attacks the bishop. Bishop attacks the queen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But hopefully there's stuff going on in his head. And unfortunately, Robert has a really good move here that I believe that he misses. What move should he make in this position? Hello, welcome to the chess class. Yes. Before you continue, it's beginner breakdown. It's for players around 1,200. Oh, okay. 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 Sure. There'll be mastery in the middle game right after this. That's a little more advanced. Yeah, queen takes b7. It's got to be the great move. Yeah, it gives white a little advantage. All right, instead, he goes back to c2, where it's safe. Bishop attacks the rook. He sees it. Bishop back to e6. So, so Robert decides, I'm going back to f1. Thomas is like, well, I'm going back to c4. <laughs> rook back to d1. Bishop back to e6. Rook to f1, bishop, bishop there. And yeah, and they're like, this is a draw. And so draw by a three-fold repetition, OK? So, so an unlikely end to, uh, to the game. But Robert got the glory, right? Because he drew a higher-rated player. So, so pretty good. And you saw he didn't hang any of his pieces this time. So, so just like that, you know, he progressed. So we've got to be making progressions. All right. Uh, reluctantly, uh, reluctantly, reluctantly, we'll show the championship game from the January nights. Because the winner is none other than Harper Evans Smith.
<laughs> Can you believe it? So, so a big thing about being happy is forgetting the grudges, right? The grudges out the window, because they only, they only affect you, not, not your opponent. So, so it's always good to at least let your opponent think, hey, I'm on your side, you know? All right, so here it is. Hats off to Harper Evan Smith. All right, he's got the black pieces against a chess expert. So this game might be a little more advanced than usual, but keep in mind, it's Harper Evan Smith. So, all right. So Harper Evan Smith is, uh, is the black pieces. And, and this, is a, this is a decent way to play against the Grand Prix attack of the Sicilian. I like to play just a6 and kind of neutralize the bishop, but, but just d5 and going for it is fine. So pawn takes, knight f6. I guess Harper's not afraid of the move c4. Well, I would probably be. So instead he protects it with the bishop. So knight takes. All right, queen attacks the knight, double attack. So obviously Harper's going to see it and play e6 probably. Yep. All right, knight attacks the knight. So he's tripling up on this knight. So now he threatens to play knight takes c2 check. Okay, so what is the only way white can actually deal with this, uh, this threat effectively? All right, our c2 pawn is attacked by the knight. We don't want our knight to take it. Bishop d3, unfortunately, would not work. Well, yeah, obviously the computer, the computer couldn't even wait to see it, but for the record, I, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you're right. So, so queen to d1 is the way to do it, OK? You've got to protect the pawn. Yes? d3, or oh, bishop b3? So bishop b3 probably falls to the same thing, except it's more complicated because you've got this check. And let, let the computer, the computer, you know, you don't even need me anymore, OK? The computer can run the class. <laughs> All right, and now, now you're in the same hole as you are before, okay? All right. So, all right. So, so any, in any case, he plays queen to d1, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the computer and Harper played exactly the same. They're like, let's get our knight out to c6. All right, hopefully this is the real live game. It looks like it. All right, so they're getting the knight up, bishop up. They both want a castle, so they do. All right, he doesn't want to be checked along the, uh, the diagonal, so he just plays king to h1. a6, threatening uh, b5 here. So he doesn't do anything about it. He plays knight up. So knight attacks the knight. Now b5, I don't know what took him so long. All right, so bishop back, bishop along the long diagonal. So, so keep in mind, everybody, okay? I don't care how many pieces are in between the knight, or between the bishop and the king, it's attacking it through an x-ray. And this game is going to be decided because of this, because the guy lost sight of the long bishop, the bishop in the back. He can be a big, big force. So if if there's anything about taken, taken from this lesson, it's uh, keep the bishops in the back because nobody can see them. All right, so queen up. What did that thread? Mate. Mate, thank you. Yeah. So what move do you think he's going to play to stop the mate? I'll give you two choices, g6 or h6. I know what I would play. A6. H6. Well, I don't want to look like a fool, but I mean, I'm thinking G6. All right, good. G6. All right, good. All right, so queen takes pawn. So he's, he got a tactic in, okay? Double attack. All right, so bishop attacks the queen. Kind of cool. So queen back threatens to trade the queens. Now, Harper playing black is down. So you think he wants to trade queens? No. F6 of all moves. Harper Evan Smith. All right, so queen back. Rook kind of protects everything. So knight up. 
queen to d5. Now, if I was playing white, I mean, sirens would be going off in my head. I even don't have to calculate anything. I see, man, queen, bishop on the same diagonal as my king aiming at g2. I might want to do something about it. The worst thing I would ever want to do is move my g pawn, obviously. But I would, want, I would probably want somebody like helping out. So rook to f3 here, all right? So he's kind of putting like another guy in the position. Knight retreats. So what did that do? It, it said, okay, there's nobody on the, uh, on the diagonal anymore. And so my queen and bishop are working as one. They are officially in the battery on the same diagonal heading toward G2. Now I've given you guys a lot of hints. So when the time is right, hopefully we'll get the answer. I'll give you one more hint. Can White's king move in this position? Can't move. Can't move. All right. So knight to c3, triple question mark. Queen takes rook. Let's see. <coughs> Checkmate. Excellent. All right. So it's good. So it's trapped. Right. So after queen takes, obviously he doesn't want to give up. So he plays uh, knight to e4. <coughs> What move do we have? Are you like, darn. Queen to e8. Let's see what the evaluation is. <laughs> Made in two. Very good. <laughs> I'm just joking around. All right. So, so Harper Evan Smith. When's the January nights, okay? So, so here's some tips, all right? So, so you got the glory, right? You won the nights, way to go, okay? So, whenever you have a reason to shake, shake. When you have a reason to smile, smile. Whenever you have a reason to sing, I won the nights, I won the nights, sing. And whenever you have a reason to uh, dance, dance it up, okay? And just have fun. I keep competing for the rest of your life. That way you never get old and you can live a glorious life for the rest of your life. All right, thank you all for coming and hopefully you'll learn the secrets of true happiness. All right. <laughs>